Hello everyone and welcome back. Again, this is Havage, and we're here for some more hardcore vanilla Minecraft. So thanks for uh, tuning in, pushing that play button in uh, YouTube. Um, drop a comment. Let me know how you heard about it. I'd, uh, I'd love to know if uh, you just were searching for some some hardcore vanilla Minecraft content or, uh, or got directed here by one of the other uh, viewers. Whatever the case may be, I'd love to know. Um, and any other thoughts or feedback would be appreciated as well. So thanks in advance for that. So in today's edition, oh, we're not going to play on a tiny screen. Let's uh, ask our doctor about why, why windows resize as soon as you try to select them. Um, nope, we should be... Uh, should be ready to rock here, so... Oh! I don't know what that flop was. It's a little scary. You okay up here, Guava? Nothing dropped on your head, right? Like a spider or something? More spider. would <laughs> be the worst thing. Salty? You alright down here? Alright, you're good. Sleep down here with Salty. Hey, buddy. Um, so, uh... For me, a little bit, uh, a little bit after the uh, the end of the last episode, and I've got a just a handwritten little note here in front of my face that says, "Don't forget tow truck." Um, so yeah, we uh, we had the great mysterious noisy truck outside while uh, I was recording the second, you know, about the second half. I don't know if it was quite that long, but. Uh, Felt like it while you're waiting, for, you know, hey, there's a loud, rumbly truck outside my window. What's going on? And why hasn't it left yet? Kind of deal. Uh, so it was a tow truck. We discovered that. And I think I kind of got distracted from the uh, the actual details by just trying to, you know, hype the uh, the tow truck drivers out there. Um, they, they get a lot of hate, but, you know, their, their primary job is to... Uh, actually be there when you need them most kind of deal and uh, the rest of it uh, probably like a lot of us you know you got to do you got to do other things to pay the bills and, and not moving vehicles have to get moved around town so um yeah I, I went out to check on this truck it was a tow truck and i was actually towing the truck right the car right beside mine and uh I, you know i wasn't overly concerned or anything but i definitely wanted to just you know eyeball it and make sure that everything had gone smoothly you know there was no fender hanging off mine or anything um again e you know far easier to be aware when you're looking than find out after the fact and be like who who was this you know if something had happened very unlikely event but uh if the guy's still right there you know at least you know the name of the tow company and all that you don't have to go you know check in with the building or whatever to try to find out who had who had been on site um, much as I fear, and I don't know that, I don't know any of the details. I don't know these, uh, these residents by name at all, but there had been a car parked. I didn't bring any of the books, did I? Dang it. Uh, I'm not gonna, should I just buy more? Uh, I mean, we got so many, right? These are books we're going to have to replace. One mending. One silk touch. At least I'm beginning to remember more where they are. Come on. Come over here. Hey! Why are you such little punks? One of those... Maybe this guy's still on sale, though. That'd be cool. Ten. Not bad. And we've got some extra unbreaking. I don't think we're going to get all the way done with this pick, so let's, let's put some of these on. With the levels we have. Okay, that gets us back down to nothing. You 
you got a sale on carrots. It's very nice. Definitely worth it to get the. Oh, that's not going to do anything. All right, now pull out the taters. And I think we still got some carrots in there, too. Them first while well, still on sale. Is that you still? Oh. All right. Carrots are done. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Uh, let's put some of this junk away. Uh, those two, in case we, in case we should need another book. But again, I, you know, I doubt it. The prices are going to go up for up. The anvil prices are going to go up. So. And without the without the melons and uh, pumpkins to really give us a bunch of levels, well, we'll get a good start. Yeah, that's that's kind of it. And go from there. All right, how far did I get in this dumb story? So I got neighbors, um, and there's been this car, and I I'm gonna say, if not six months, at least four there's been a car parked in the same parking spot, never moved. And um, I kind of noticed that because, you know, the, the layout of my building is there are, there are apartment units on the north and south sides, you know, just roughly. And there's lots of buildings there all angled. But for mine, you know, roughly north and south is, is kind of the alignment. And they... I'm on the, you know, I'm on the lower floor, but there can be uh, up to three levels of apartments. And so there's, you know, kind of stairs and a breezeway and I'm on one corner and then there's a stairway and then there's mirrored units across the hall from me and there's stairs in between. That's why, you know, sometimes I'll be like, man, what is going on? These stairs sound like they're, there's somebody's dragging, you know, whatever, uh, metal hammers or something down but uh, yeah, today today wasn't about <laughs> stairs or hammers or anything else. It was that the uh, uh, this car had been towed. Well, the stairs come down in between these two little sections, and there's like two breezeways in the structure of my building. You know, so it's basically like three buildings: a middle chunk and then two wings, which just you know, roofs that cover both of the two outdoor stairway type things in between. And where the stairs come down is where all, you know, all of our doors come through the, those breezeways and you head out to the parking lot, you know, you, I kind of go out my door and turn and then there's the, the parking lot with all the cars. Well, right, right at the breezeway entry, there's a, a metal kind of safety rail, right? You know, it's kind of one of those things. One, you don't want... You know, somebody like shooting through on bikes, kids and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of slows that down. But, you know, I think it's it's really about safety. You know, they don't want they don't want one people like moving in and stuff and, and premium sitting on those spots or anything. And two, they uh, they just want to, you know, if, if somebody were to, I guess, like take a tumble down the stairs or something, you know, they wouldn't roll roll all the way out into uh, into the parking lot or traffic. But whatever the reason for it. Uh, there are these little railings. And so then, you know, it, it kind of makes a T-junction, right, at my, uh, outside my door, where you can go left or right to get to the parking lot around this metal, metal, just, you know, like a railing, like a banister that you would see in inside your house or whatever, you know, it's just right there, right, three feet high or whatever, so no big deal, but there are parking spots all along there, and, you know, you can go to one side or the other of this, and uh, because I'm on the one side of it, you know, that's usually the side I try to park to. And there's spots out, you know, across the way and all that kind of stuff. But, the, you know, the closest spots are right right there. And the sidewalk kind of only goes to the end of the little fence. And then you can turn and there's, you know, like a space. Just, you know, the line between two parking spaces in this little 
gap and that's kind of the walkway out to all the other parking spots as well as like the dumpster and the paths that I like to go walking on and all that. So it's really, you know, my most used way in and out of my place. And, and you know, if I can, I'll take one of that or the next spot over to it because they're the, the two closest to my bedroom. And, you know, you, I think everybody would attest that has lived at that kind of level, especially in the winter. Um, you know, if there's one that's close to a ground floor bedroom, it's really nice to know that to the extent possible, you keep the person who, who goes to work at like 4 a.m. from scraping their windows outside, you know, what, what like a dozen, 20 feet from your bed. <laughs> that's not the best place to hear somebody scraping their windows at 4 a.m. on a winter morning. So I can tell you from experience. But um, side sidetracking this story, uh, I try to, you know, I always am looking for those spots as a premium. They're right in front of my place. You know, I can keep an eye on my vehicle and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I kind of notice. And this one side of the the little railing to the entrance of my building is the one that uh, that I kind of watch for. Um, well, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this well. I, I want I want to be one of the people that parks in that first little row because if I do, then I I can help position my truck. And I you know I think there's a lot of people out there that are very conscientious of parking. You know where where they position their vehicle and um, how much space they allow between it and the others. You know how how closely you are to the center of your spot or you know do you hug the line on one side or the other sometimes it's out of your control right if if somebody else has gotten there first and they park on the line you've got to kind of adjust over you know you got to be able to get in and out of your door and all that i'm not i'm not fanatical about it or anything but i do especially in the two spots on the other side of this you know, this little entry gap <laughs> in, in what's otherwise just a parking lot I always try to make sure that I'm I'm kind of cheated away from the the walking part, you know, the part where all the people will go in and out. And granted, if you go to the other side of the the rural safety railing, there's a sidewalk that goes all the way around. There's wheelchair ramps and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can you can deal with this situation, but for convenience sake and just as a courtesy, I, I try to be very careful. You know, if I'm pulling in, I'll even crack my door and just make sure. Hey, do I? You know, is there like six inches at least between my tire and the the line? You know, if we both do that, then there's no problem with people trying to walk through. And, you know, if, if you're in that situation, don't try to line up your side mirrors um, so that they're exactly perfectly even with the other cars. So that, you know, if if people need to or it gets a little tight, they can wiggle through, right? And again, not a huge deal, but it's just something I've grown to uh, to understand is something you can, you know, kind of do as a... Uh, you know, being nice. So I try to do that. I, I try to park. Well, I noticed a while back, okay, here's this car and it's a little sedan and it's parked. Not, not horribly, you know, it wasn't a disaster or anything, but it was, it was, you know, kind of up on the line. So not great. And then it just didn't move. And I was like, okay. Um, and I'd seen it around, you know, it, was, it had like a window sticker and stuff. So you kind of, Hey, I, I've seen that car. I didn't know who it belonged to or anything like that, but I, I knew, you know, it was of a, most likely of a residence, right? It had been around here and uh, and came and went enough that it, uh, or at least at least arrived enough that it wasn't a, a big question. So, no problem, right? That's that's it. And you know, this is a, a person that's parked there. And it's not, you know, not a big deal but then it just didn't move it didn't move and we're talking like four to six months at you know the pandemic it's so so crazy but there had been a long time where i'd kind of been like am i sure that i'd ever seen that before you know is this like broken down and uh and nobody's moving it was it was it a car that was stolen and just abandoned here um you know because that, that that can be a deal too especially when you're in a in apartments, not that the the residents would would bring you know a stolen car back, but when when people have stolen cars and things, you know maybe they've 
a bit of joyriding or, or, you know, they've gutted out whatever stuff. I don't know. I, you know, outside of gone in 60 seconds, I don't know much about car thieving. But, uh, you know, it, if if people have actually stolen cars to the point of moving them somewhere, they'll often dump them in, in you know, instead of just like on a street, in a, a parking area. That way they can they can kind of avoid people aren't aren't particularly watching the comings and goings. Whereas if you, you know, you drop it on the street in a suburban neighborhood uh, at the end of a cul-de-sac, people may go, Hey, I've never seen that car before here. And just, just like this, nobody really, you know, is going to say anything, right? <laughs> kind of just watch it and be like, uh, okay. Uh, so I, you know, I had, I, I've never said it. it's, there's no reason to say anything. Right. But I've kind of just observed like, Huh, I wonder what will ever happen. Well, it, you know, it's kind of at the point of like, all right, yeah, it, it broke down. You know, the people that had had it moved to something. I don't know. I, I could have sworn it had been it had been moved around in here, but it's not, not going anywhere now. Maybe it's, you know, maybe the engine just died, whatever. Well, at one point, I saw one of the one of the residents of the area actually open up the trunk and like take something out or put it in or whatever. I was like, okay, well, it's still still claimed <laughs> still being uh being tended to a little bit um and yeah today today it got towed so i'm hoping i'm hoping it was the uh you know the the it had a major mechanical issue and with the pandemic and all that you know somebody just either I don't have the money to fix it. I don't have the need to. You know, I'm not traveling this far. And if they got a roommate or a husband or wife, whatever, that uh, they can just, you know, didn't didn't need to fix it right at the moment. So they left it. Um, and, you know, if that was the case, awesome. Then, uh, then they're good. As far as I know, it hadn't had issues with tax. I'd kind of looked, you know, and I think I'd noted that, uh, and this, you know, really makes me think it was there since... Uh, since the end of last year because i think i'd looked and saw that it was um 2021 tags on the license so you know that that's something that would have gotten it towed probably more quickly if it was just sitting there with expired license plates but none of that had happened it was uh it was just sitting so i hope i hope for their sake that it uh it wasn't a deal but you know if it if it wasn't, I think, you know, the, the building is probably going to say, well, we were well within our rights. You can't just leave derelict vehicles in the parking lot without any any sign of move, whether you're a resident or not. And they may, you know, they hopefully, because they you should register your license with your your landlord, right? You know, the, the people that maintain your property. So that because they do work with the, the towing companies, you know, they basically say, hey, you guys can can make money off of um, towing illegally parked or, you know, um, untagged, unlicensed vehicles in here. And then when people have to get them out of your lot, they'll have to pay, for, you know, pay for the tow, pay for whatever impound fees or anything like that. So th there's definitely a side hustle uh, to it from the, the tow truck driver side. And that doesn't mean I've, I've recanted my position on tow truck drivers. You know, it's just another part of what they need to do. And it's a needed service for apartments or company, you know, companies with just parking lots and things like that. They can't have just abandoned or, or otherwise derelict vehicles sitting around in their parking lot. You know, the, the other residents need to have, have those spots available and um, they need to have some ability to track that, you know, hey, we don't have one one unit with 17 different cars and they're you know they're taking up all the parking kind of deal so it it could be a pain you know if you're not on top of it and that's what i hope that it, these people are not going to get a nasty surprise at, oh what happened but if they did then uh, you know i think if they go to what happened to my car my car got stolen and i was like well actually it got towed and uh we actually called him to do it because he haven't moved it in a while um so sorry about that, but, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. Now, I'd hope if it was registered, you know, at to a resident in the building here and they, 
they were watching it, they would have given a call, a heads up, you know, hey, oh, by the way, we see that this license of this vehicle is uh, is registered to you. We're about to tow it, so here's the reason why, and if you uh, if you don't want that to happen, get it to move. So I, I kind of, you know, I kind of think it's pretty likely that, uh, that they did, um, you know, have a heads up that it was happening today, but it's just one of those things that you kind of go, uh, I hope that's, hope that's working out the way everybody intended. Um, but it's, it's nice, you know, frankly, it's nice to have it, um, uh, moved. Uh, I, you know, I don't mean that disparagingly to the person who'd originally parked it there, especially if there was an issue, but it's nice to have it out of the way. Um, it, you know, it, it kind of turns over if, if somebody's not, you know, and if I'd known those people or anything, you know, even if I had a car that was, hey, I got some mechanical issues, one, I'd, I'd probably try to tell the building, hey, look, I, you know, I'm going to be getting this fixed, but I need to, uh, to move it. And of course, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do it myself, but I'd maybe have some friends come over and, you know, on a weekday or something like that, when there's lots of spots available, I'd try to, you know, wheel it you know push it to a point where you could even in neutral kind of coast it and uh and get it into one of you know every place has those like furthest away from anything parking spots and get it there and out of the way of, of everything else instead of you know taking up one of the the close can be you know you got groceries or anything like that you want one of the close spots you don't want to walk all over the place so all right we need how many more levels let's check so that was a very long-winded account of, yeah, there was a tow truck and they towed a car. It's gone now. And I hope it, 17. So we need 11 more levels. Um, yeah, I hope I hope it isn't a rude surprise. Don't ruin anybody's day. Nobody, nobody wants that, right? So, um, should we harvest animals? Is that our next, next move? How close are we to, to dusk here? Pretty close. Let's jump on the boat and actually go uh go back to the quarry. Do a little do a little fighting. Feeling up. Uh, the coffee that I had in the last episode has got me raring to go. I think just for that pure power up for our upcoming battle here, I'm gonna just finish off the cup in a second. Mm-mm. Room temperature. Wonderful. Don't you worry, though. I got another uh, kind of the, like, two-thirds cup that, uh, that I made at the same time. Now, it's a little warmer because it, it sat with its top covered for a while uh, while I was recording that first episode. So it'll probably cool off before I drink much of it, though. All right. So we'll just kind of mix it up out here. For lack of anything specific needing to be done, the time to take down this little pedestal and begin our arena work, clearing work. Feel free to check any of the previous episodes, but I, you know, I think the ongoing plan is eventually we'll kind of make a, a hollowed out natural bowl here where uh, we can have night night battles with various mobs and uh, ne'er-do-wells. Not that we're going to be terribly dependent on them for... Now that we have so many eyes, you know, this is normally what I do to uh, farm up the eyes from Endermen. Now we're getting need... I mean, I guess I can repair up the axe, right? As well. Oh, clean miss. We're not going to have the excitement, though, of the, uh, the phantoms mixing it up. This time. Um, like we had by the the end of our last uh, last little desert session, and we can have some fun kiting the uh, 
Kai and the Creeper trying to... Hey, you were supposed to die. Come here, cra Creeper. Come here, Creeper. Oh, here's a here's a Skelly. Skelly. All right. Um, we just gotta try to get around behind him. Well, this isn't gonna work real well. Oh, that's a bad place to be. Oh, this is when it gets exciting. Whoa. How did... Skelly? <laughs> supposed to be shooting this creeper. Not this. Now, why is he running away? What are you doing, dude? I need you. There you go. Alright, he starts shooting. Oh, I'm gonna come back around here. Get the creeper. Get the creeper. Listen, pal. Oh, boy. Oh, now you're still around, though? You want to come get me? Worthless skeleton. I gave you every opportunity to take him out. Endless. What? Oh, man. What in the heck is making these guys come after me? Now, will will they get the same kind of aggro deal with the other mobs? Yep. This is pretty darn chaotic. Hey, go get the trident guy. Drop your trident. I, I didn't really see. I don't think I got it though, did I? Do we see a trident around? And he's like, man. So what is the deal with these trident drowns showing up? I mean, it's kind of cool, but really it's unsettling because I don't understand why they're doing that. I guess I'll leave the the rest of that as is. So I fixed up my axe here. At least until uh... I'm saying it sure would be nice to uh, have a trend right now. I mean, it's cool. I'm glad they have them. It'll always be a little bit hectic, because I don't think we're going to, you know, like, oh, no other mobs are around, but here, we'll throw a creeper at you. Um, it's just about to pull that, that Enderman on that spider. Here. Still working on our axe, I see. Really? Oh, I see you, Enderman. See your eyes. Cold, dark eyes. The night. Wow. Just off. You get a priority.
clearly I'm not meant to hit that one over there. Why? Yeah. I don't know my own strength. Should be a fair amount of XP over here, right? Definitely shot a few. You little nasties out this way. Aww. I make the villager sound when you guys don't take opportunities to kill creepers for me. Get over here. Ooh. Woo! I don't know where he came from. Why not? We haven't had an apple one. Oh man. Listen, pal. Did a little bit of excavating for us here. It's kind of a nice thing, like, uh, oh, you guys want to just break some blocks inside the quarry? That's that's all right. Let's let's shovel in and dig in than we have to do. <laughs> Never did get her axe all the way healed up. Still. Well, another another missed chance for a trident, which is unfortunate. What do we need? Eighteen. So I think we got a level and a half or so. Eat sleeping. Give it that. More junk. We it's getting real close here. All of a sudden, we're gonna need to uh, got a random garbage bell. Now we finished recovering our axe. Oh, what a god! Oh, I didn't do anything. I just made the little shots. All right. Don't. Th oh, that isn't even. Yeah, just bad. Bad, bad. All right, let's go back out. Thought I saw something sitting at the end of that water, but never mind. Uh, put these two away, and then let's go do the animals. No, that's not a box. Sand. And sandstone. Alright. This will take care of the rest of that.
up to 11. It's a little, uh, I don't know how this, how this is going to do. Let me know if, uh, if that volume change uh, throws us off too much in the future recordings. I'm just going to drop it down a little bit when we have these cows going. Something I probably should do every time, but... And I know, you know, you can go into the game and just change the animal sounds, but it's so tough to find, like, which which ones are actually under which things. Um, uh, I don't want to get sucked into a lot of settings and configurations. We'll just dump the overall volume for a bit, bring it back up if I remember. But I, you know, honestly, I don't know. It, maybe, maybe adjusting the overall system volume will actually adjust what my level my my in audio is recorded at too. I don't know. Ooh, more rain. Ooh, maybe we'll get another crack at a storm. Can uh, try to get a skelly horse. Oh, come here. Or don't. Spazzy, where'd you go? Uh, so I was talking the other day. Um, two, two things related to the same subject that I realized I never finished. Uh, I found a, a good show that I enjoyed watching on... Uh, Amazon, and that was called Louder Milk. Um, I don't know how far I, I got into talking about it. Um, it is a, an adult and a fairly dark comedy set, set around uh, a group of addicts in a support group and kind of, you know, the trials and tribulations of their lives and, you know, well, all the random stuff that comes up in those kinds of conversations and meetings and um, you know really the the level that you have to open up to about everything in order to be able to truly help help people that are on that brink of of uh, falling off the wagon is that is that what you do when you I don't know, give up uh, sobriety or things like that um, and you know, I, I've had some more chances to to kind of be in a, a counseling type room, and I'm not a counselor. I don't take any of this the wrong way. I'm not a counselor. I, you know, I'm not speaking for for people that have been through these kind of things. But I have, um, you know, because in some of my my episodes, I've kind of given uh, just some kind of you know like things that I've learned about like career coaching and you know some of the the mentality stuff that I've learned and that, that all relates so just in the course of your life you know helping helping others around you 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 end up in some of those kind of things and I wonder I wonder if that show would have appeal for people you know or they may they may kind of dismiss it if they've never seen that kind of group environment where you do have to just you know one you got to be there, right? <laughs> it wouldn't be by choice. Um, but, you know, for, and, you know, I think, I think most everyone is familiar with the, the setting or, you know, kind of a portrayal of a setting of an AA meeting um, where you, you have a rel. I think they do cap them. I don't know that for sure, but I think that they, they don't want groups to become overly large. It's tough to share, you know, it, it allows people to kind of sit with an anonymity. <laughs> I guess that's an awful way to say it for, uh, for Alcoholics Anonymous, but it allows people to sit without contributing. And, and I think, you know, in AA and in all of these, it comes with a, 
an expectation that, you know, the, the things in contact that you have within those groups is not going to leave them. Um, if it doesn't, no one will open up and share because a lot, you know, a lot of the things that that in the show's case, addicts have to deal with um, involve taking a big chance to share. They're hard, you know, scary things, and we're talking about personal growth now. For me, uh, that's more than you know, getting people to see faults in themselves in kind of like a professional setting, or you know, being able to take what could just be a, hey, you're jerk boss, get off my case response and turn it into a, hey, let's, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to wreck your day or be a jerk, but you've got, you know, I know going in, I've got to get you to the point where uh, you accept what, you know, what needs to be corrected, whatever that may be, and we'll, uh, we'll actually be, you know, looking forward or in, you know, committed to those changes by the time we, we end up, or, you know, if it's a number of um, such events or meetings, uh, you know, that that's what we're working towards. So I wonder if, if that type of a show has a, a receptive audience of people that have never been in, in any kind of relatable setting to that. Um, you know, they wouldn't get the the discomfort of a lot of that. And they wouldn't they wouldn't have the same kind of reaction that I had, which in parts was very positive. You know, like, hey, this is good. And this show, you know, I think it ran for three seasons. A little background info. Uh, ran for a few seasons. And it, I don't like this weight. It, uh, it started on some, like, whatever network that I don't, I don't know that I ever had. But... That went belly up, and uh, Amazon pulled it in. Uh, helped produce the last last uh, of three seasons so far. That, that unreliable internet sources, you know, are kind of divided as to whether it's going to come back. I guess the director and producers are kind of like, yeah, we, you know, everybody's down. We just have to have to find somebody that wants to wants to keep making it. Uh, I, you know, my honest honest opinion is like so many uh com comedic type shows gold in the first season maintained very strong in the second still good in the third but uh you know you can tell that all of a sudden it, it gets to be a little bit more work and whether it's just you know guest writers and things like that or, or what you know the the various elements and plot pieces that come in get a little more, oh, hey, this is our opportunity to, you know, deal with this social issue, you know, some of that kind of stuff. And, and so it it trades off or tries to merge, you know, and this, this is fair to an extent. Um, it tries to merge very dark har comedy humor. <laughs> <laughs> Try to merge humor and comedy in your mind uh, and then see either one or both of the words at the same time. So it tries to to merge dark humor or comedy with very raw emotional issues. And, and, you know, the fact that the people that are in those kind of situations need to be there for their life, you know, for the sake of their lives. It's it's. You know, in me, in some cases, I, I don't know all the, you know, all the stories, but certainly the show, you know, puts up there. It, it, I think a lot of those people end up in those settings because it's court ordered, you know, <laughs> and uh, and they don't have a choice. And it's then, you know, do they do they kind of wake up as a result of that and understand that? Yeah, you know, all these bad things that are going on. Um, can only really be fixed uh, by yourself, and, and you know when you stop, stop blaming everything else outside for your behavior and problems, and that that really resonates with me. That whole, uh, uh, you know, this is another whole topic, I guess. But don't be a victim. I, I'm just going to leave that at that. But don't don't look for the reason why you're a victim of your circumstances or your your upbringing or anything, you know, your mean boss or, uh, you know, what you may just lean on as, 
I'm not as smart as everybody else, or I'm ugly. You know, don't don't make yourself a victim with that kind of negative thinking. Be positive and and kind of rise above it. There's one episode that uh, that really speaks to that well. I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to spoil any of the show in case you are are old enough and want to give it a try. But um, again, I I really wonder if if people who have no familiarity with with that approach to taking a look at yourself in a group setting where you know it is sharing and and some raw emotions mixed in and then the the real truth that there's a lot of comedy that exists among those kinds of people in real life because it's the only way you can you know when I and again, my, you know, mine's been in the part of jobs and kind of that, you know, it's never been long term. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess we all have have dependencies in our lives. or Maybe I do, but they're not. Uh, I've never had, you know, destructive ones. I, you know, I haven't shown any real addictive personalities and I, I don't, uh, you know, I like coffee, <laughs> some of those kind of things, I guess. But particularly with like alcohol, you know, I, I don't return again and again to that. I've shared in the past, you know, as I. A college kid, you know, I messed around with all all the the bad things that you're not supposed to do as a kid that you then have the freedom to try as an adult. So, you know, I smoked cigarettes for a while when I was out from under my parents' roof, all that kind of stuff. None of, none of that really stuck uh, too much, and, you know. And even even if I'm kind of being bad, right? You know, I also said, hey, you know, we I have some friends. We still do. You know, we'll get out of town for boys trips. And yeah, you may wake up in, in a few of those mornings that realizing that you drank a bit more. But you know, we're we're in a place where we're not going to be driving. We do it very safely, and it's not something that I then take home with me and try to maintain. But I get, you know, that these people, and I think this is where I'd left off a few episodes ago. Was I know um, just from a, a friend who worked with a deaf guy a lot. Um, that uh, within communities where you you really do have you know have something in common that's never going to go away you, you know you've just got to deal with it whether it's a disability like being deaf or uh, you know combat veterans probably have similar type support groups and, and uh, you know methodologies for trying to deal with the you know a PTSD or you know, the stresses of coming out of of her, the horrors of war uh, and how that impacts you. Uh, but certainly addicts going into these meetings understand going in that one you know once they've really bought into that that application of treatment, which is you are powerless against against you know whatever your your addiction is you you know you will always be prone to going back into that if you give yourself the chance then they uh, they really uh have to you know kind of have to be there for one another and and make the strength that i know i need you know this support or these types of meetings or whatever it is long long term you know probably for the rest of my life to be able to just keep in mind that it's only one slip away from, you know, the wheels fully coming off. And that, you know, it, it's from what I know from people that have struggled with addiction and stuff, it, it, that's a very real thing. You know, you, you just, just lose a little bit of focus. And I've seen, you know, I think we can all relate to that, whether it's not getting your homework done in time. For me, it's eating bad food, you know, too much sugar and all that kind of stuff. You know, like you just take a, a little bit of focus off what your goals are and what you're really trying to maintain and the positive things. And before you know it, you're uh, you're definitely on on some thin ice. All right, enough about all that. Let's. Let's use some wood. Oh, I think we made a crafting table downstairs, did we not? It won't hurt to have an extra. Right. Oh man, let's go. Kind 
good. Now that the tow truck is gone, the uh, the garbage truck is here. Every episode, there, there's something new. You guys got to tune in to find out what random outdoor noises there will be in this episode. Um, it looks a little brighter, though. It, really, it was really raining uh, kind of in my break time. So, let's see. It did look a little, little brighter off to the west when I peeked out. So, let's see. Did I have one? Yeah, I did not. So, this is kind of good. For now, sure. Let's put it, put it here. So this is uh this is what everybody's been waiting for. I know. Log 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 and log and chest. Chest, not trap chest. Again, being a you know single player hardcore, I don't know what uh Never had any need for trapped chests, and don't know what the, how those really work together. Okay, so what are we gonna do with our uh, storage type environments? I want to. Anytime I, I set these up, I want to have a lot of space in between, uh, but I think. With our portal and our stairs, I want to keep these two free, right? They're going to be our, our kind of path, and I'm going to keep one free here. So let's kind of start placing here, and these are pretty easy. Just go so quick. Oh, um, no. I think we'll just go on unchecked, but I do. Now that I think about it, let's pull actually two of these up off the end. How many more do we have left? Um, then let's do this, this, this. I don't know that any of this is going to matter a whole lot. But oh man, let's go upstairs for more of this. Uh, do I even want stone? Yeah, let's use stone. Got a lot of it now. So we had one more stack. That's not going to do it, but we'll use it before we go upstairs. Excuse me there. Moved the mic, but uh, a little burpy. Uh, at least for now, we can kind of push up on there. Let's do this right. Clear all of this stuff out. And I know, lots of, lots of just tedious work for it's basically a row of chests, but I don't, you know, if this is what we're going to look at for a while, I don't want to look at annoying little inconsistencies. I want to look at, that's all stone. Or at least look at uniform stuff that won't uh, trigger any disgust in the future. Alright, so no obvious like 
boxer in there, and we can uh, could do that one later, but let's give us a nice cushion. All right, what do we have here that we can do before we have to have to excavate little tunnels? Okay, good there. And we'll clean up this cobble. And this is purely just for the the gaps between the chests that we're gonna have. Um, in the past, oh, come on. In the past, I used to uh, used to kind of break these into sections, and I, that was kind of what I paused on. Is do I want to do that again? Um, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. I think it looks a little cleaner, but it. Uh, it does limit our overall number of chests, and that's not cool. So I don't, at least for now, I don't think so. You know, maybe we'll do some other rows, but uh, used to, you know, then try to fit various item types within each section, and it, you know, it becomes way more for pain than it's worth um, because for one thing we'll, we'll kind of have identifiers on the chest themselves to help us out and for another it uh, like I said it you're defeating the purpose by adding a bunch of cosmetic posts in the middle and uh, and limiting your you know you just gotta carve more rooms and spread things out more to uh, how, many, how did I never fill that in? And of course, it's all the way down here. So now I'm going to have to go all the way back. We're going to have to harvest a ton of trees. I mean, look at how... Ooh, by the way, we we want we want three rows of all of these chests. Or three, three high of all these chests before we're done. So, yeah, we still got, uh, got some work to do. And of course, we're just one short. That's all we know we can do. Okay, shh. This will be a secret. You guys that are here for this, you know, when, when the hordes of people come to watch, they'll never know. There's a tiny little, little missing lock down there. And we didn't have to run all the way back upstairs to get it. Uh, now, I think um, I will, you know, make sure that these are consistent on the torch line. So we do want to clear all that stuff. Might have. Wait, I did that. Okay, so we're good. Good, good, good. Now, where do we have? Let's. So you can. Oh, this is the part where you need to get a, a little rhythm going. You can set chests on top of one another using shift. So I'm holding sh left shift. Uh, then I can place another chest on top of the one that's already there. You can then make chests, but you have to shift click them together. If you don't, they'll just sit side by side and you'll you'll end up with a whole row of single chests and nothing else in between. Um, Getting the these first ones set is, uh, I think, worthwhile when you have a lot of space around. Just to uh, that was it. Right, go back over. Let's just drop off this one. A little bit of actual cobble. So you can see we're gonna need a lot of wood to uh, to finish those out. Um. We can also try to keep picking away at additional additional XP. Uh, we'd sure like to get a shovel too, but we're we're pretty good, uh, you know. And I know I'm seeing all that. Like, oh yeah, we're doing so well for this point in the game. Oh, that's not what I want to look at. We're at day three forty six, <laughs> so we've gone a really long way. Um, in terms of game time spent and when you look at it that way yeah okay well we're we're taking a pretty leisurely pace but um 
that, you know, that's kind of the trade up. I think we've had a, a great time exploring, don't you? Oh, really? Oh, did you find out that you burned in the sun? Oh, that's too bad. Whoa, whoa, creeper. Not cool, man. Uh, what do we want? More wood? Uh, let's just go for go for a wood stroll. As long as our little creeper friend hasn't come around too far, we can just do that. Now uh, here we still we still get the uh, thump sound when we drop from height, but with our feather falling, we uh, we're not going to take a whole bunch of damage when we do. So, uh, in the pursuit of additional wood, uh, we'll definitely want to push, you know, a little bit more on our border, and then the next thing is going to be there. We have talked about how just by planting a few more rows of pumpkins and melons, you know, we'll have all that experience, emeralds, all the rest of it. It's so quick and easy to access now that um something we can definitely do and not that we're looking to do that before we uh before we do some of the, you know, the next kind of phase of game content and some more building and all the rest of it you know i think the storage is uh pretty i, I equate that to building it's functional building but uh it's something you know we need to do and will help help us get further along in that hey we have a real base here we don't just just have a mess of um, chests and, and whatever so not too worried about your enderman zip around all you want so yeah we'll, we'll kind of clear this will give us a more of a perimeter around and then push these back in anticipation that uh, could want to get a bit more uh, farm field space eventually. And if nothing else, you know, our road and all that. Um, as we we talked about in the, in the kind of historical significance way back when we were first coming to the idea of a fortress or fortification, um, you know, kind of being out on a an established frontier, maybe where you know you feel a little bit like like Minecraft, Steve or you know whoever Habbage, um, that you may be a part of a bigger world, but you're cut off from here. You're you're out on your own. And, and those fortifications, you know, there were times in the, in the uh, expansion, um, you know, of the 18th, 19th, and, and even parts of the 20th century. And, you know, before, it certainly was arranged. You know, the Portuguese, as we talked about, were doing as far back as the 17th century in, uh, you know, with Magellan's efforts and, and some of that kind of stuff are directly as a result of them. So, ooh, getting rid of that, by the way. Cool. Not gonna have that on my property. All right, come here. Oh no. You can be novelties out in the world or whatever you want, but, uh, Around here. All right. So next, uh, next big wood area. I think that's given us a little more space. You know, if creepers come out of the trees, we stand a fair chance of seeing them. Next, I think maybe a coast, a coast road in this direction that would not be, you know, not necessarily take the trees right on the shore, but uh, clearing a little clearing a ways back uh, where we could run a road eventually. And again, you know, we're just kind of making, making light 
game story immersion um, points for why why we would do stuff. And you know, I, I think it, you know, as a settlement in a remote land got more established, uh, their residents would you know they naturally begin to expand in different directions along the coast. Um, so they they would want to multiply the the benefits you know you've got to go you got to go chop trees for firewood or you know whatever else you you need lumber just construction just like we are or uh, or any other reasons um, but as you're doing that you also want to be clearing whether it's farm fields or uh, just a defensive perimeter that lets you clearly see if things are approaching um, and then paths to explore uh, you know in that in much of that era water transport was the most efficient you know in many ways you know think super super cargo carriers right a lot of the world's trade most of it is still conducted over oceans on massive container ships um, and likely ever will be because there's not much resistance to moving uh, buoyant loads over the uh, over the surface of water as opposed to over land so always you know even you know even when, and air travel again the weight and the energy required to lift that is uh is significant and a factor unless you, you know you're in like a zeppelin or something but uh beyond that um you have the least resistance right you know going through air it, you takes a lot less energy to push through air than it does to push through water but you know similar principles all those are going to be uh, cheaper from a fuel expenditure than uh, you know rails or, or anything over ground so um, always preferable but you know as you become more established you would have um, beginnings of roads along the established waterways those would become the first uh you know real interior roads and the next would be roads that would link between those waterways you know if you had you know like a, a, here a coastal road but then you had some rivers you would then begin to develop a network of little spider webbed roads that would reach between so I'm going to leave the, the ridge here forested and kind of cut in. Remember, a few episodes ago, we ended up in a cave over in the swamp. And kind of, you know, just having fun, poking around, enjoying our new armor and, and weapon enchantments and that. Um, you know, I think that going in this direction is going to largely re reconnect to that. You know, we probably don't uh don't push a, a big old road through a swamp but uh would definitely you know kind of get to it and then go around the edge and there's some planes there that we uh we may you know reconnect to our road from the other side of our our little peninsula that we live on um, back towards the larger continent so You know, maybe, maybe in the style of uh, of Tolkien, that's you know a little uh, little lonely inn. Uh, was it the was it the Forsaken Inn in the Lone Lands? Um, featured more prominently in Lord of the Rings Online, but was taken specifically from the text. It's mentioned, but there's not. Uh, not a whole lot of activity, you know, it's just kind of mentioned as the, uh, as the fellowship before it's a fellowship. It's really just Strider and the, the hobbits are, um, heading towards the refuge of Rivendell. They, uh, and before they reach Weathertop, uh, they kind of pass. And I, I think they acknowledge without stopping that there's a, uh, you know, kind of, derelict looking ooh, I bet let's get back home <laughs> it's, oh I probably do actually let's do this right just so I can model what uh, 
what we now have as functionality here. A carrier bed. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, what? It's the 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 Forsaken Inn, right in the Lone Lands, not the Lonely Mountains, but the Lone Lands. I think is what uh, I'm trying to get to. So here we, you know, we cut across. We can kind of just run back along, um, and you know, really, again, this is this is dual purpose. We're we're harvesting wood for our settlement, uh, obviously for the storage, you know, the warehousing of, of important goods. And uh, as we're doing so, we're also just kind of, you know, making it easier that, you know, if you got back with inside of land and wanted to hop out of your boat and, you know, maybe do some hunting for game on the way back, um, it, it would be those kinds of opportunities that would uh, would make traveling, you know, as opposed to going through just the unrefined underbrush of a, a forest when you can, you know, know that, okay, there's kind of a cleared path home and I can duck into the woods from here to, to you know, look for game further away from where our, you know, the smoke of our fires and everything would, would tend to make game more scarce. Um, and on. So that's kind of, kind of the background of what I'm thinking in this activity and long, you know, long, long term world, world building stuff. Yeah, you know, maybe we do make a little in something, you know, a way house. Obviously, it's not going to have, you know, an innkeeper or anything like that for us, but, you know, just a few little, little small shacks where we would have an established bed, maybe a few supplies we could, you know, reload with if we needed to on our way. And uh, otherwise, just have the benefit of a roof over our head on our, our way. Uh, ideally, uh, those are things that, you know, you kind of want to paint space out. Space out about a day's journey, and you know whether that's by foot or by horse. Usually, you go with the uh, the slowest common means of transportation, right? You know, people traveling on foot are going to uh, need accommodation and space. And you know, if you're thinking, you know, pioneer trains of the Great Plains. Uh, at, towards the end of the period we're talking about, uh, yeah, you know, they not many people would have just been crossing the Great Plains solely on foot. They would have had some kind of team, you know, whether it's oxen or horses or whatever, that uh, they're helping them along their way and would, you know, provide motive power uh, when they got where they were going to, you know, help establish, plow the fields and, and get them established in their new home. So uh, all that would have come into play now what do we want to want to think here do we want to does this dip back around a hill a little bit let's do that i go inland for a bit how are we doing on space again let's not forget that we have the uh the ender chest and can load up a bit more wood obviously our axe is doing just fine So that's no problem. And, you know, again, I'd, I'd like to get the shovel. I'd like to have a full, full set of tools. Uh, but at this point, I, you know, my real priority is, is getting our, uh, our storage system up. Our, that main, you know, that, that main junk chest is the one that's now the real problem. We can, you know, we can clear up the dirt. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of that stuff up, up out of the way as well. But dirt and netherrack and things like that are going to grow very quickly. So just having one building supplies chest it probably won't really cut it. So getting those mapped out is a good deal. And we got lots of leather so we can identify them all 
and I'll kind of you know show my methodology again. You know, prepare to prepare to get a little a little aggravated. I think, and I think that's fair because you know, no matter what the game, you've developed a system that probably you know probably if you play this or that has worked for you, and if it works for you, you go, oh, this is you know this is the most efficient. Whether you like the automatic sorting as opposed to having to stand there and I gotta figure out my directions. Uh where did we come from? Seriously, where's the last cut down tree? Trees. Doom okay, right through here. Oh, that's pretty narrow. This is the hill we're trying not to go up. Apologize a little bit for these hiccups that are going. Um, ooh, different tree. Some of these are a little grown together, so uh, tough to tell. And that's why it's a little tough to tell where we came from because they they're so close that now a lot of this stuff won't clear. Um, and I think for that reason, at least part of you has to go a tree. Does any more of it? Can we leave it kind of as a tall tree? This kind of seems a little back and windy around, but maybe we leave that, take this, make this a windy road. Hoping this is a short squat tree, not a, not a super tall. Since I didn't climb up it, mist blocks there. So then, if we <laughs> we've done like all this roundabout road, and it's like, yeah, you know, it the farm is right there. You don't have to, you don't have to go too terribly far. But you know that that would be kind of a part of it, right? It, you know, as we talked about, if you know, if you're returning on a, a steamboat in the the 19th century, or you know, just a, a river slash ocean sailing vessel, and you did say, "All right, we're you know we're 10 miles away from town, and I know you know it's a little tougher to get a game right back at the fort or town or whatever, you know, whatever." the nature of the settlement is at that point uh I'll drop me off i'll i'll see if i can you know get a deer or whatever on the way back and bring some meat when i come so that would make sense and having kind of winding roads that would go along there would offer you more opportunity or, or access to some of these wilder lands right so i can i can continue to live with a with a winding road as a part of our backstory, front story, just our story. I, I say it knowing that I, you know, I really wouldn't really want it too much, but because uh, it, it, you know, it, quickly gets into the, the sense of modding and all that, but kind of cool if there was some form of like a wild game, you know, when you've got your bows, you know, it's kind of like rabbits and stuff like that, right? You know, that the idea of bow hunting or something that you could kind of continue to do that as you went on a little bit. Once you've domestic, and you know, like the foxes that wouldn't necessarily be domesticate, you can't, you can't just tame a deer, right? You know, or something. I, I don't know. Maybe that's too close to what you got. You already have leather, so why would why would you need like buckspit buckskin? Um, but you know, some some kind of a game animal that you could never tame, so you'd never be able to just you know breed and and uh, raise whole herds of them. 
but would still have some appeal for for ongoing hunting. And, you know, maybe make them a little rare. You know, only only in certain biomes or something. I don't know. It's kind of fun to think about. Again, I, with the knowledge that you know, I I like vanilla Minecraft. I wouldn't want it to become too mod feeling where it's just you know everything is overwhelmed with complexity that you know is just really designed to prolong prolong gameplay all right all the rest of this stuff is uh low stock so we're doing well sleep oh uh oh 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 get ready to run Hi, Sheepy. Uh, I saw that bow skelly back there, and where he could have spawned also means that uh, some friendly creepers could have spawned. So, anytime that you know you you kind of notice as you're falling asleep that mobs could be spinning or spawning, uh, when you wake up, just go ahead and start moving before <laughs> before you even look around. Um, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, sleeping with your boots on. You you know, you got to be ready to move if uh, if something comes your way. And in this case, that would be a creeper. What I really don't, you know, what I really don't want is, is a bunch of other creeper holes around here. It's one thing in the quarry where we're going to be trying to harvest that sand anyway. Totally different in, uh, in our little hunting forest or game park. You know, we could even call it a game park as we did develop more along here you know if we've got got eventual communities coming around maybe you would preserve some of the area immediately around as a, a more natural setting it's all about the scope of the world you know and these things like this in your area um i i say game park kind of thinking um for for my uk friends you know the area around windsor castle um there is a massive park, uh, and I, I don't know the name of it, but uh, for anyone who does, isn't familiar with the geology, ge geography, <laughs> I don't, I'm not familiar with the geology, although I know that there's like a bunch of, uh, of reservoirs off the Thames in that area, and that, uh, so that may indicate that's kind of gravelly and stuff, that, uh, that those have been... Uh, excavated anyway. I don't know. I'm really, really stretching here. Uh, but anyway, uh, Windsor Castle is uh, one of the the old um, old castles in the. Uh, I mean, what what do we call that? Like the south central area of England, outside and to the west of London along the, the course of the Thames, but which is the river that runs through London. It's not the Thames, it's the Thames for all my American or North American friends. Um, so uh, when you when you head um, head west along the river, you know, it was kind of the next major seat and it was uh, you know, after the, the Tower of London stopped being a royal residence so much, uh, Buckingham Palace was certainly very late, but there's a number of, of palaces uh, that you know, a lot of tourists enjoy seeing in uh, in London and around uh, where royal families over the years have, have lived, you know, Kensington, uh, you know, and they all have, have impressive grounds, but they're in the middle of the city, right? You know, they don't, they don't have just massive lands. Well, much much as I'm sure the intent was when it was originally created, um, Windsor Castle was kind of the, you know, you could get there, I, I don't know what the the boat travel time would have been back in the day, but it wouldn't have been terribly long. It's You know, it's not a ridiculous distance out of town. What, it's like a 20-minute train ride or something like that from the airport? And it's it's right out. Windsor Castle is you may have seen it if you ever fly into Heathrow. Uh, you know it, Heathrow is is kind of right out on that area. It's within easy sight of of the big Heathrow Airport. So you know it, it, it's that convenient to London, right? It's not far. But you know back in the back in the day, as we often talk about when 
um, when you spent most of your life, you know, in a small village or something, and even, you know, for for the early end of the time I'm talking about, before the Industrial Revolution, um, even London itself as a big city, uh, the largest in England, was still relatively small. And, you know, this was well after Windsor had been established first as a Norman castle and then uh, expanded upon over the centuries. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, right? There, there's a reason why it's a, a, a tourist destination and why... Uh, just recently, uh, Prince Philip's funeral was held in the, the chapel there. Um, it's a beautiful setting, a beautiful little town. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the school. Is it Eton? Eton? Uh, UK. <laughs> UK homies, keep me, uh, keep me true and pronounce correct my pronunciation i think it's etn e-t-o-n is the school that's right there um and right on the other side of the river from the castle so you know this has always been a, an area of some of established you know city and and the little old town of windsor is right there um hang on a second give a sip It's gonna be honest. Most of the time, when uh, when I say sip as well, I'm like trying to get some like lip hair or something that's poking into my nose <laughs> cleared out. Worst feeling ever. The pandemic beard is uh, perhaps on its last legs. All right, this is interesting. We're scouting now. We got still got some brown. Our axe is wonderful. I think I think if we had iron axe, would be. Excuse the hiccup. Done just on the the fact of needing to. Oh man. Excuse the two. Excuse. Replace two iron axes if we brought them. So yeah, I think I think it's worth not just cutting into the plane, but continuing along through our our woods here. Even if this is just a point, it, it's a long way down a point of land, right? Got some little ponds here before we cut into uh, the water. Remember when we got bees down here? Cool if we found another bee nest. Remember, we need three. Um, so let's, uh, let's maybe change tact here and just take little trees on the way back. We'll see how far that gets us. Now we've got ways, right? We so uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my I'm gonna lose my semi pointless story anyway. But um, Windsor Castle, it, you know, a royal seat for a long, long, long time, and uh, and royals liked it because it you know it was remote, out of the and what would have been, you know, the kind of stink of the city, frankly, you know, when you got open, open rivers of, of sewage, basically, you know, where everybody's just dumping their food and human waste and animal waste and everything else. And that's a little bit liberal. There were certainly, uh, there were certainly people, enterprising people that made a pretty good living off of gathering some of those kind of things and uh and taking them out composting and uh turning them into fertilizer for the you know surrounding again transportation long distance is tough so all the you know your your potatoes or your carrot you know the stuff that we've got got in our little uh our little farm over here any of those types of supplies uh couldn't be transported you know far far away so you had to any city or large town had to be ringed in, you know, a lot of less than the day's drive by wagon uh, fields. And, and, you know, those typically wouldn't be the the wheat or oats or barley or, you know, whatever grain fields, because those can be dried and stored and transport milled as flour and, and transported further. It's the, the 
fresher produce, which would still be a premium just because, we'll leave that one, um, just because of the need to transport. Uh, but, you know, people would, there would be a demand across, you know, you got, you got industrious merchants and things like that, you know, people don't, people don't want to just eat uh, bread and meat, you know, I, I want, they want the various goods of the, uh, of the world, right, you know, a varied diet is what you need, and going into the city, you can't just, you know, have a kitchen garden right outside your, your home, so you gotta, you gotta trade for that. Well, Yeah, that, you know, so what, despite having industries of people that are taking some of the stinky stuff away to uh, to help uh, fertilize those gardens, they would also become, you know, become pretty fragrant in the heat of the summer, you know, and those warmer times you don't want to really be there if you have an option so having a a residence and a secure place kind of outside of london that was easily reachable real appealing right that's that's kind of a good uh, a good option to have and so it became a you know kind of a luxurious home outside of the city but you know it, you didn't have to go all the way uh to you know, let's say York, right? You don't have to go all the way across the length of the country to get out of the city. You just you, know, you want something pretty convenient. Um, I think any of you guys uh, that have have remote cabins and things in in the upper mid. I've talked about that before. That's kind of a tradition up in on the upper Midwest. Here, it's uh, in Colorado. It's you know some people have condos in the mountains, right? And they'll go up and kind of make that but you don't want to you know you don't want to spend two days driving if you're going to pay for a condo and have it you you want it to be something you can hey we're going to go for the weekend or we're going to go for a week or whatever but we're not going to spend the whole time traveling to get there we, we just want to be there and you know go so uh yeah that's something some of these mushrooms may have to go this one kind of seems like oh like it's going to be troublesome. All right, enough of you. Um, we need a brown mushroom too, right? We should get that when we're, we're back in our nether mode. The next time we're in, remember we gotta, gotta find some brown mushrooms. If there doesn't happen to just be a mushroom tree in our way somewhere, and we just take it all down. It's just possible. All right, now is this an inlet? Yeah, so we don't want to cut too far in here. In fact, we can leave this birch tree. We want to swing back. Don't want you blowing up parts of trees and leaving them floating at all. Not cool. Uh, so yeah, if we're in the nether, we want to uh, grab that. So back again to Windsor Castle, um, you know, th think that boat ride down the Thames uh, from your, your city house or your city castle to uh, one a little more remote, you know, a little less in the public eye, so to say, you know, it's just, yeah, it's another residence, another official residence, but uh, a little removed. And everyone would have appreciated that space. Well, it also, with the benefit of not being right in the city, and, you know, established at a time when when there was unquestioned that the, the king owned everything in the country, right? You, you grow crops on the king's country land, you pay a tax just for having done so, right? And, you know, then he parcels that out to the barons and the nobles and everybody else, and... Uh, not that barons aren't nobles, but uh, to the no his members of the nobility, they collect the taxes, support him with military troops, and uh, the whole feudal system exists. Well, the you know the advantage when there's low populations, and you know this is far away from kind of the the center of your population is that you have 
lots of unused land in the area. And so, you know, for time immemorial, I'm sure, I, you know, but probably not that. There's, I'm sure there's records. Uh, again, this is, it was never a part of my history growing up. I visited and, and loved it, but uh, at the far end of a tree-lined avenue that just kind of goes from the, the away from the river on the castle and uh, runs yeah you know just off into the countryside so it's this like kind of formal trees you know single singular groups of trees on either side of a just a walkway you know graveled walkway wide and you know would have used to accommodate carriages or something i'm sure um at the far end, there, there's this hill with a massive statue of King George, maybe? I don't know, some some person on a horse. I don't remember. <laughs> um, uh, and then beyond that are all these wild parklands. And, you know, they, they kind of... Uh, then on the far side uh, become the the nexus of some of the uh, very posh uh, neighborhoods outside of London now you know high end and uh, there's a racetrack in the the wake of uh, the Kentucky Derby and Churchill Downs the talk uh, the Ascot racetrack is further down on the banks of the Thames but um, so you know it, it's kind of a a ritzy, glamorous area, and but on the far end of these acres and acres of, of wild old tree forests and, uh, uh, you know, open spaces that are, are largely just, you know, open park now. And, and, you know, I, I just wandered into them. And, you know, there, there's, there's fences and things that, you know, just say hours, you know, no overnight, you know, that kind of stuff, right? It's not camping. It's not, uh, it's not like our national forest type land, but it is, it's managed wild like that, right? And there's large herds of, of wild red deer, I believe, in there. And, you know, these were all animals that were encouraged to live in those areas because they, they were valued for hunting. And so, you know, this is kind of the same eventual mentality again it's differences of time right you know if we're still in the construction of a little fortress area you can think of it more as hey we're just accessing more of the area around as we very much are right we're learning more about what's here as we go um because we don't necessarily know what uh what everything is around us or where it is you know caves and things that we may find uh little ponds inlets all that good stuff, right? And yeah, you know, we, we kind of know what the biome is, but uh, it's still fun to explore. And so we're, you know, we're kind of at that phase. But later on, uh, you know, if we've established and built more things in the area, then, you know, it may become kind of that, oh, we've preserved some of this dark old forest um, close to our community just to have parkland see that, you know, it, I don't think that there's a, unless it's, you know, just herd management stuff and done at designated times. I don't think there's a lot of hunting going on at, you know, even, even though it's a very large, it's, you know, kind of, I mean, just suburban outskirts of, of London parkland, you know, I don't think that becomes a huge hunting ground and it's certainly not maintained as exclusively. Now it's, you know, joggers and people like me who are toting a camera and, you know, looking for cool European birds that I'd never seen before and animals, you know, the red deer and all that kind of stuff, plants and, and who knows. That was where I, uh, I talked about, I've seen parrots in the UK. Uh, that was where I saw a whole flock of parrots come flying across. So, um, cool, cool area. And that, that's, you know, I, I know we're just filling time while we chop trees a little bit and it's not the most exciting so it's fun to let my my mind wander a little bit i hope you guys bear with that but um i think that would be pretty cool and we still have to do all those flowers we but we got to get to a flower forest there's so so many cool things to do again that's why i don't want to i don't want to just get uh you know completely to the end of the game i want to I want to keep a little bit of that. Oh, man, we just ended up in a half-heart excitement. 
uh, while we go. Uh, yeah, it doesn't mean it'll always ever go away. Or ever always. Uh, words tough. Is that the only ram? I guess we could throw that in. Let's get rid of these saplings. All just temporarily needing to be juggled because we're about to solve some of these overflow issues forever. Put that in there. That there just for the time being. More, more overflow bows. We don't need. I don't care about waste. You know, already we got like what a half dozen of them stored up there. I mean, I don't think that's an exaggeration, but we got some. Yeah, three, <laughs> four. Well, that one, that one kind of counts. Um, yeah, we got enough, right? Let's go down. Just with these alone, we should get, you know, fairly close to done with the one side, and then we've still got everything that's in the in the silk the ender chest to supplement with. All right, now all of that should eventually go into chests. Not quite as many as we had last time, but we'll do our best here. Now, using the shift again. And before we fill our other side, we'll uh, go back. Th oh, no. This can be a little bit of the... trick here is getting these oriented the right way so let's just go back through and then we can you know, now uh, once they're up we can just connect to the the insides of them the shift bar makes it slow I know I am aware of these I wonder how our time is with all our fun castle talk and all the rest. Let's check. 42. So maybe we'll get half a storage done. No. Not, not at all what we want to do there. We're going to go boom, boom, boom. Thinking here now, I'm already thinking ahead. You know, I apologize, I've been talking here. Um, thinking ahead to you know, kind of placing these within the room, right? That that they're not just rows of chests, but are kind of built in as you would, you know, if you were gonna make some, uh, you know, closets or or cabinetry in a in a room in your basement. You wouldn't just have. <laughs> <laughs> or a row of bits. Well, maybe actually that's not true. In an unfinished basement, I know I personally had rows of just otherwise unadorned, like Tupperware bins full of stuff that you never unpacked from your last place, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I take that back. Let's go get some stone. Be plenty, at least for now. And with our uh, 
with our scaffolding, we you know we can really be fairly carefree about this, I guess. If we need to get back up here, but I'm kind of hoping we don't. can fill that in from the other side. Now, here, we can put up some lighting. And this is going to keep, you know, we can, we can fill in above um, on this other layer if we want to. And that's, that's certainly another fair option. You can keep this dark. You know what? Maybe should we do that? Yeah, let's. Sometimes I kind of like having the light um, just back there between the chests, but now if I run out of here. <laughs> this will be oh no. I say this like oh yeah you know we can we can just go get some scaffolding no way man. not wasting that time. So we'll see, light versus dark. We can always get in on the other side if it if it seems over overbearing. <laughs> That's it. But uh, something along those lines. Okay, so this this height will keep anything from spawning in the middle there. Let's go see what we've got. I think we've only got like one one partial stack of spruce, but I, I think the spruce wood would be pretty 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 there. I just said pretty pretty to be able to say pretty pretty. It would it would look natural and nice, you know, pretty is not even the right word for that context. But. So is that our only spruce? No, we got a couple. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see what we can get going here. I'm gonna need full blocks, but I may. Again, we we may well be going on a run now to uh, to get some more spruce wood, but we'll see what this this does for us. And I gotta get rid of some of this dirt too. It's getting to be about that time. We we don't live in a, a home that is partially dirt walled. Each time I go out here, I'm like, yeah, we should, we should address that cobble. No, we should get rid of the dirt walls first. Okay, so what do we what do we need to do here? We need to frame this so that this area that needs to be here so that the chest can open is not 
they're not just ugly and nasty. Now, if we drop in and upside down like that, oh, we can't. Oh, that's perfect. All right, I was wondering. So yeah, we we can probably do this without slabs. We'll maybe maybe do some to to balance things out a little bit. Um, I do know what. No, I, l I like the lower, the lower look, and I don't mind that they stick out a little bit. I think that looks kind of cool. I think in the past I've, I've usually had those out so that those, you know, are out overhanging the chest, but we'll have the overhang up above. Because I'm going to do both rows of this, right? So it, it looks kind of natural. And I may have wasted a bit of resource material on the, uh, the slabs, but around the ends and things, those may come in handy. I don't know. Uh, do we do an extra one out? Maybe. See how this looks. Sorry, I reached over to uh, hit the button while I was uh, switching up my stacks there. Yeah, I mean, we gotta. We gotta figure out something around here. Okay, what's our top? Actually, what's next? 151. Let's uh let's let that settle and sink on a break. Maybe maybe a day, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I think I'd like to get get some of this rock and and that's probably another another one more episode especially if we end up going going for some more uh spruce wood but we'll you know we'll kind of come around on this side too in some degree oh we did that just like that and then because i don't want it to stick out crazy far right maybe we uh on these ends here too, we just uh, drop in some of our switch blocks like that. I don't know. I, I think that's nice. That we've done so much with the oak uh, over, and I don't mind using the oak at all. I think it, I think it looks pretty good anyway. But um, just a little variety, it's kind of nice. So. And I have haven't been shy about how much I really like the spruce. So let's start there. But uh for now, I think oh let's do do this again here. So this should turn that one. And then boom boom boom. boom. And we may I left this. We may actually do like, you know, a whole spruce. I kinda like to put a a uh, crafting table into the end of these posts uh, sometimes and the reason is it's usually gonna be close to my run so you know if if we end up pushing all of that far well back so we can do a full 64 and we're filling up our inventory then just out of the way but but available we pop over we can put everything back in the box I mean I think we can from our inventory but like coal you need to have all nine so it's nice to have a crafting table but I think these will actually come out and we'll, we'll, you know, maybe do an inlay of some other kind of wood to decorate them a little bit on the ends. But, uh, yeah, something so we're not just looking at the exposed shelves. So that's all subject to change. But I think we're uh, we're doing good for this episode. I, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Uh, stay safe, definitely. As I say, take care of yourself. Take care of others. Um, Thank you for sticking with you know this is a little wood harvesting a lot of uh, a lot of maintenance we did get our you know started off kind of early with trading and getting the hoe uh well i guess we've done the hoe getting the other pick done um uh, did some animals but uh by and large you know i, I know we're, we're just kind of sticking around today and that's all stuff that you got to do you know it's a part of minecraft so i don't mind sharing that with you and i hope it's entertaining as i do if uh, you have comments or, or other things that you'd like to see for content 
thoughts about you know storylines around the world, anything like that, please feel free to share, drop a comment, or uh, or just let me know you're enjoying the content with a like. I'd certainly enjoy that. Um, before the next video airs, go ahead and get out there. I haven't I haven't loaded any. I just realized <laughs> I could have been running that last one. The tow trucks story distracted me. Um, so yeah, you know there will be a little bit of a delay on getting some of these up from my time, but. Um, between now and the next video, which may already be there when you're watching, go outside, take a little break, um, stretch your legs, see a little bit of this awesome world we live in, whether you're uh, you're in the UK near Windsor, whether you're in Colorado in the uh, sort of soggy Rocky Mountain area, um, or anywhere else. Uh, you know, your your home is beautiful, and even if you haven't taken the time to see it in a while, there's, there's places out there that are just waiting to uh, amaze you if you take the time to look and see them. So, go do that. And we'll see you. We'll be here next time when you're ready. But for now, thanks so much for coming in. I always appreciate you guys. You're awesome. Take care. Bye.